Every time the Hulk was forced to take a life, superheroes have a general aversion to killing. However, there are a few exceptions like Wolverine or the Punisher who possess darker and more violent tendencies. In the case of the Incredible Hulk, known for his wild and unpredictable nature, taking a life has never been an easy choice. Throughout the years, the intelligence and personality of Bruce Banner's alter ego have evolved, but even at his most unintelligent and uncooperative, the Hulk would not deliberately kill unless he believed there was no alternative. Nonetheless, there have been instances where the Hulk found himself forced to end a life, moments in which he seemed to derive some twisted pleasure. Let's delve into these instances where the Hulk was compelled to take a life. One notable event occurred during Greg Pak's Planet Hulk story, which stands as one of the most significant Hulk tales in franchise history. It was even adapted into an animated film and played a role in inspiring the events of Thor. Ragnarok. In this story, the Hulk is deceived into boarding a spaceship and subsequently exiled from Earth by a secret alliance of superheroes who deemed him too dangerous. His journey leads him to crash land on a merciless planet called Sakaar, a realm where advanced technology meshes with the brutal rule of the Roman Empire. Upon arrival, the Hulk is promptly captured and forced to partake in gladiatorial combat. Enslaved by obedience discs capable of inflicting intense pain if he resists, the Hulk is coerced into killing other gladiators. From the onset, during his training exercises in the Maw, a proving ground for gladiatorial combat, he eliminates fellow slaves. He even slays one of the sisters of his future ally, Sem, a member of an alien race known as the Brood, originally established in Uncanny X-Men. In the arena itself, he takes the lives of Quark's comrades, with Quark being a rocky warrior who later acquires the voice of director Taika Waititi in Thor. Ragnarok. The Hulk later leads a revolt against the tyrannical Red King, inevitably resulting in the necessity to kill enemies on the battleground, including the Red King himself. Before these events, Hulk's first recorded instance of being forced to kill an adversary took place in the pages of Tales to Astonish number 61, published in 1964. In this narrative, Bruce Banner constructs a robot capable of withstanding the impact of an atomic bomb. However, a shadowy opportunist steals the robot shortly before its scheduled testing, intending to sell it to the highest bidder among foreign nations. Despite the robot being intentionally designed for a human passenger, the thief seizes an opportunity to test the robot's capabilities by driving it onto a simulated battlefield. The robot's exterior withstands explosive blasts and showcases immense strength by hoisting tanks. When the Hulk confronts the thief, the battle ensues as the thief believes that if the robot can defeat the Hulk, its value will skyrocket. Despite the Hulk's relentless assault on the suit, he fails to leave a mark. Cornered by the robot, the Hulk retaliates by knocking the suit and its occupant into a seemingly bottomless pit. The identity of the thief remains undisclosed. Interestingly, the robot makes a subsequent appearance in Incredible Hulk's number 600 and one from 2009. Bruce Banner repossesses the suit and employs it to train his super-powered son, Scar. Presumably, Banner thoroughly cleans the interior before utilizing it himself. Among all his adversaries, the military emerges as the Hulk's most consistent opponent, surpassing notorious villains such as the Abomination or the Leader. Regarding the question of whether the Hulk actually kills the soldiers pursuing him, the creators generally adopt one of two approaches. They either leave the fate of the soldiers ambiguous or follow the example set by the 80s G.I. Joe cartoon, where jet pilots and tank crews are seen successfully ejecting or leaping to safety. However, in Incredible Hulk number 145, published in 1971, there is no ambiguity. 
Pursued by a Soviet destroyer, the Hulk seizes hold of the ship's hull, dragging it deep into the ocean. As a result, the pressure causes the destroyer's special munitions, presumably nuclear weapons, to explode. Notably, the comic depicts no lifeboats or shocked sailors emerging from the wreckage. Such fictionalized carnage likely passed as acceptable in early 70s Marvel comics, primarily because the victims were Soviets. In further testament to the Hulk's overwhelming power, his passage through the water generates powerful tidal waves, creating havoc in unnamed cities to the east. While no deaths are shown, we witness buildings crumbling and civilians fleeing for their lives. Antecedent to this event, a year earlier in an untitled story, the Hulk also killed the despotic ruler, General Draxon, by destroying his war tower. These instances demonstrate that although superheroes generally avoid killing, even the Hulk has been driven to take lives in certain extraordinary circumstances. Draxon governs the fictional Eastern European nation of Morvania. Initially, he attempts to recruit the Hulk, but when the Hulk turns against him, Draxon relentlessly pursues the Green Goliath using his immense, mechanized War Tower of Draxon. The Hulk displays his strength by obliterating the colossal metallic monstrosity with a single powerful punch, resulting in Draxon's demise. Notably, Incredible Hulk number 134 also stands out due to its tone and underlying theme. During the story, the Hulk encounters citizens of Morvania who mistake him for the legendary Gollum, a mythical creature molded from clay to serve its creator. Alongside these action-packed scenes of overthrowing despots, the narrative takes moments of tranquility with panels devoid of dialogue or narration, a rarity within a 1970 Marvel superhero comic. Furthermore, on Kai, the Hulk indulges in both sex and violence. In the early stages of his 12-year tenure in the title, writer Peter David concludes Incredible Hulk number 345 with the hero, seemingly perishing from a gamma bomb blast, triggered by his arch nemesis, the leader. However, without any explanation regarding his survival, his presence in Las Vegas, or his inability to revert to his alter ego, Bruce Banner, the Hulk mysteriously resurfaces two issues later, enmeshed in the employ of a mob boss. The fans speculated fervently until the revelation in Incredible Hulk number 351 and number 352, a two-issue retrospective unveiling alien sorcerers from Kai, a microscopic realm previously visited by the Hulk, who had been covertly monitoring him. These sorcerers transported the Hulk to Kay before the leader could execute him. However, Kay had changed since the Hulk's previous visit, giving rise to a religious following centered on the Hulk, resulting in fanaticism and the subsequent suffering endured by Ka. In exchange for their ability to suppress his human side, allowing him to remain in his Hulk form perpetually, the Hulk, now bearing a gray complexion and exhibiting fewer moral qualms, agrees to dethrone the ruler of said religion, the Grand Inquisitor. Having conquered the Grand Inquisitor in Incredible Hulk number 352, the Hulk subjects him to a brutally torturous ordeal until he coerces his followers to accept the Hulk's position as the genuine embodiment of the Hulk. The Grand Inquisitor seeks the Hulk's blessings, which the Hulk dismissively grants with a mere wave of his hand, ultimately leading to the Grand Inquisitor's death due to the agony inflicted. Additionally, the Hulk continues to carry the burden of trauma's demise, unlike most of the lives he has taken in the past, as it has exacted a toll on his conscience. The fateful encounter between the Hulk and trauma occurs in Incredible Hulk number 394, where the Hulk engages in a battle to prevent trauma from murdering Atlanta, a valuable ally within the Pantheon, a paramilitary group comprising superpowered individuals named after figures from Greco-Roman mythology. 
Troma, whose true identity is Troma, hails from an interstellar empire known as the Trojans and possesses an unwavering obsession with Atlanta, desiring her hand in marriage. Upon Trauma's abduction of Atlanta in Incredible Hulk number 413, the Hulk and his compatriots from the Pantheon embark on a race across the cosmos to rescue her. Along the way, they assemble a formidable team that includes the Star Jammers and the Silver Surfer. As the collective force of heroes confronts Trauma and his formidable father Armageddon in Incredible Hulk number 416, the Hulk culminates the conflict by brutally slamming Trauma against a wall, impaling him on his own armor. Consequently, Armageddon swears vengeance against the Hulk, repeatedly attempting and failing to exact retribution. One notable attempt by Armageddon to avenge Trauma's demise occurs within one of Peter David's final issues of the series, Incredible Hulk number 464. Armageddon courses the Hulk into a machine that he believes will exploit the Hulk's power to resurrect Trauma. While the contraption proves successful, the Hulk intentionally overloads Trauma with his sheer might resulting in the subsequent demise of Trauma for the second time. Furthermore, Trauma was not the first extraterrestrial villain that the Hulk has slain, nor was he the most formidable. In Incredible Hulk number 270, aided by former adversaries like Aquan and the Nightcrawler, distinct from the Blue X-Men character, the Hulk confronts and vanquishes a colossal Amuva-like being known as the Galaxy Master. Following the defeat of Galaxy Master's henchmen, the Abomination, the godlike creature endeavors to exterminate the Hulk by employing gamma rays, the very energy that originally spawned the Hulk. While the attack momentarily inflicts damage, the Hulk absorbs and redirects the destructive power back at the Galaxy Master, ultimately obliterating the entity. The Hulk is a character that Bruce Banner understands better than anyone else and a recurring theme in Hulk stories over the past 50 years is the notion that the Hulk is his own worst adversary. This idea is not just a conceptual one. In Peter David and George Perez's future imperfect storyline, the Hulk confronts himself, and as anticipated, the outcome is unfavorable. The narrative takes place approximately a century into the future, in a world where both heroes and villains have been eradicated by war. In this dystopian setting, the Hulk, now identifying as the Maestro, governs with an iron fist by harnessing the amalgamation of Bruce Banner's intellect, nuclear-powered might, and years of pent-up anger. Rebels employ a time machine to transport the present-day Hulk into the future with the hope that the strongest version of the Hulk can defeat the even stronger Warlord. Unfortunately, the Maestro is thoroughly acquainted with all of the Hulk's techniques and more, easily overpowering his younger counterpart and ultimately breaking his neck. Nevertheless, the Hulk recovers and confronts the Maestro once more. Although he cannot defeat the villain physically, he ultimately emerges victorious. Utilizing the same time machine that brought him into the future, the Hulk sends the Maestro back to the gamma explosion that initially transformed him. In a simultaneous turn of events, the Maestro incinerates at the precise moment of the Hulk's own birth, resulting in a triumph for the forces of good and two resounding victories for the Hulk in this epic narrative. In contrast, the Silver Surfer proves that gamma radiation is no match for the power cosmic. In Tales to Astonish number 92 and number 93, the Hulk, understandably tired of being pursued by everyone on Earth, endeavors to find an escape from the planet. Spotting the Silver Surfer passing by, the Hulk believes he has discovered his opportunity. Regrettably, the surfer misinterprets the Hulk's escape attempt as an act of aggression and retaliates. This turns out to be terrible news for the Hulk. While Bruce Banner's alter ego and the Silver Surfer initially appear to be evenly matched, 
The former Herald of Galactus possesses a concealed weapon, the surfboard. Despite the Hulk's ferocious assault, Norin Rad employs his board to deliver a devastating cosmic blow, leaving the Hulk disoriented. Subsequently, when the Hulk appropriates the surfboard and attempts to flee the planet, the surfer employs his power to transmit an electric shock through the board, rendering the Hulk unconscious with the assistance of nearby boulders. To compound matters, the Silver Surfer not only physically defeats the Hulk, but also gains emotional dominance over the Jade Giant. As the story concludes, the Silver Surfer is prepared to aid the Hulk in eliminating the gamma radiation from his bloodstream. However, after the Hulk expresses his determination to continue his battle, the Surfer chooses not to assist, declaring, a monster you are, and so you shall remain. This statement plunges the Hulk into a profound melancholy. Take heart, Bruce, when you finally establish a new home on another planet, you will exact your revenge on Norin during the subsequent confrontation. For further details, refer to the Planet Hulk comic series. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please subscribe our channel, Zap Comics.